Hey everybody, it's Monica with Fit Eats Coach and today I'm back with 20 minutes of stand-up paddleboard yoga stretches. We're going to cover all the different types of locations that you can do stand-up paddleboard yoga, why some places are better than others, how to keep yourself safe in various conditions and surroundings, and also what type of yoga practice you're wanting to focus on and how it can be really flexible and work with any kind of stand-up paddleboard adventure that you have in mind. Um, a few minutes in, we're gonna get into a 16-minute practice that includes dozens of yoga stretches that you can do as a flow or just as you know a nice recovery from your stand-up paddleboarding. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna want to decide is what type of stand-up paddleboard yoga adventure you're wanting to have. Are you wanting to go for, you know, a 30 to 60 minute paddle and then just do some stretches at the end? Um, or do you want to kind of split that time between like 30 minutes of stand up paddleboarding and then 30 minutes of, you know, a pretty good uh, stand up paddleboard yoga practice? Or do you want to mainly just focus on the yoga aspect of it and not really do that much paddling? Um, knowing what kind of practice that you're going to want to do is going to determine the location that you choose um, because some places are a whole lot better for stand-up paddleboarding but not so great for you know the yoga stretches and some places are really amazing for the yoga stretches but not so exciting for stand-up paddleboarding so and also if you're with another person or you know family members then you're going to have to kind of accommodate other people and so it's important to know what you want so that you can find the conditions that are perfect for what you want. You can have an amazing time. All right, so once you've decided on what kind of practice you want to have and the location where you're going to do it, you're going to have to decide whether you want to practice anchored or not anchored. Now, if you're in really rough water and there's a lot of wind and like fast boats going by or other traffic like jet skis and swimmers and just other people around, it's probably a good idea to anchor yourself somewhere and try and get away from, you know, all the traffic. Um, and definitely be aware of what's underneath you. So when you anchor yourself, um, only give yourself enough slack that you will float away um, and not over to an area that's really shallow where if you fall in, then you might hit your head on rocks that are underneath or logs or other debris. So just, you know, maintain like your safety um, if you're anchored in. Um, but there's also a way to practice yoga stretches and a yoga practice in general without being anchored in and that's to just paddle out 10 to 15 minutes somewhere obviously this works better in a calmer lake um, in calmer waters i should say and then what you do is you put your paddle on your board and you just do poses as the water brings you back to where you started um, it can be a little bit tricky if you start kind of going towards the edge and maybe going towards rocks or trees. Um, but if the water's really calm, you can just quickly pause your stretch or your practice and then kind of um, use your paddle to steer yourself back into a straight line. It's really fun to do this. It's a really nice challenge for your balance and for your core, especially if you're working on kneeling poses or sitting poses. Um, it can be really fun just kind of floating with the water as you're practicing. Okay, so now that we've covered how to practice, we're gonna get into 16 minutes of yoga stretches on the stand-up paddleboard. I was in very rough water and it continued to get, you know, rough because boat more boats started getting around this area and there was quite a few jet skis. You're gonna see all this during the practice. So I just went into down dog and it felt really unstable. So I came back down to my hands and knees and did bird dog for a few seconds as you can see i'm just rocking all over the place and i really was you know doing some core activation at that point to try and really stabilize my body now from there i went into thread the needle with a hip extension i've never tried this pose before and i'm not really sure where i saw it but i thought this would be a really good idea because the water 
was just rocking me around so much um, and it kind of makes you feel disoriented so doing a pose like this it kind of like gives you that control of you know you're in a pose that's twisted with your limbs all over the place but you're in control of the pose and then that gives you the stability to keep going so from there i went into a uh, plank and chaturanga and then up dog and just looking around to see what's going on and now we're going to go into the second sequence so there's five sequences in this practice that i broke it down into so from here we're going into bow pose. You can do regular bow pose or you can do single leg bow pose, which is a little bit easier. Um, and you're just holding these poses for as long as you like. Um, from there, I'm gonna come back up into a down dog and try a single leg down dog because I'm starting to feel a lot more stability with just everything, even though the water is getting rougher <laughs> and rougher. All right, from there we're going into a deep lunge with the knee on the board and hands overhead. Really got to activate your core there. And if you do feel like you're getting, you know, rocked around too much, you can always place your hands back down on the board and maybe lift the knee up, add a twist, um, maybe bring both forearms to the board, do whatever works for you. So when you're on your stand-up paddle board especially in water like this with a lot of distractions around um, your practice is going to be nothing like what it is on a mat where everything is just you know stable and serene um, and maybe the only thing that you have to control is like your own thoughts <laughs> so just be aware of that all right from here we're going back up into a plank pose but I could feel that there was a lot of traffic around me and so I just kept looking around kind of wondering if these jet skis that were behind me were going to come closer. Um, I was just taking my time at this point and in a little bit you're going to see a couple of swimmers as well going back and forth behind me so I was a little bit distracted at this point but my practice did get a lot better as it went on. Um, and here's the thing about practicing outdoors, you know, in the water, um, is everything that's going on around you um, is a way for you to refocus yourself or just, you know, to be in that moment and not try to just like control your entire practice. That's something that I've learned. Um, all right, so here we are back into deep lunge um, on the other side, and I'm going to go back into a lunge twist. First, I'm going to bring my arms overhead for a little bit, definitely feeling a little bit more stability. Um, and then adding that knee raise and into that twist. Um, I remember the first time I tried this pose, it felt so incredibly hard. It felt impossible, really. And now it actually feels pretty great. All right, so from here, we're doing a half camel. And then we're going to move on to sequence three. All right, so from here we're transitioning through plank into a recline sequence. Um, reclining on your board is so nice. It's basically like, you know, just laying on the beach. Um, but we're doing a single leg bridge um, and kind of getting a feel for maybe trying a back bend at some point, which I did, a really small one. Um, and it actually felt really amazing, but we're going to get to that in a later sequence. So right here, I'm just kind of, you know, doing a little bit of reclined pigeon. And then I'm going to do a reclined big toe pose out to the side. And then from there, I'm going to do a bit of a twist. This all feels really amazing on the water. This is probably the most um, stable that you will feel on the water is when you're laying on your back on the board um, and just you know hold the stretches for as long as you like as you can see there's crazy people in the background doing crazy things having some fun um, and Lake Havasu is a pretty cool place I highly recommend visiting there even if you're not gonna go stand up paddle boarding it's a really fun place to be at um, so from there we're coming up into sitting and we're continuing to open up the hamstrings with this big toe, seated big toe pose with a twist. 
Um, I'm just kind of going with the flow. I mean, I know that sounds uh, <laughs> kind of cliche to say that because you're on the water, but I'm just doing whatever feels right for my body. And if you pra if you practice for a really long time, um, you're just gonna you know feel like you know exactly where your practice is going to end up at the end and how you get there is it doesn't really matter so right here we're going back into our plank and we're going into garland pose just to kind of stretch the low back and hips a little bit more garland pose actually is probably one of the safest poses that you can do if you feel like if you're standing um, or kneeling or in any kind of position where um, you don't feel safe um, just squat down like this and you'll feel really safe and actually if your board is moving a lot it will kind of stop your board from moving so much all right so we're on to the next sequence um, I'm gonna come to standing just for a little bit to kind of look around um, see what's going on around me and then we're gonna keep going All right, so from here, we're going to give it another shot with crow pose. I had been trying to do crow pose probably since like the third day that we were paddle boarding. Um, and I was starting to feel a little bit more confident with it. I definitely feel like if the water had not been this out of control, I could have done it. It's one of my favorite poses to do on land anyways. Um, but it definitely felt really unstable and it's not like I was afraid to fall into the water I just really wanted to keep practicing so um, I figured and I don't know if you just noticed but that boat went by really fast and it actually like threw it kind of lurched <laughs> my board forward so that was the main thing that I was afraid of if I was in the pose and something happened like that and then I end up with my face on the board that would not be fun and I would have to stop practicing and I didn't want to do that all right, from there, we're going into a forward fold um, because I figured if crow pose felt, you know, fairly accessible, then maybe I could do a different arm balance instead. Um, so I'm starting to open up my hamstrings a little bit more and my inner thighs with this modified gait pose, which are going to see um, the front of it in a second. Um, so just going again into that kind of like a deep, you know, hamstring stretch, sitting down facing the side from the side of the board and coming into you know gate pose um and then doing your forward fold and then popping up from there and doing a kneeling gate pose actually this is not um gate pose i don't remember quite the name of it but it opens up your inner thighs and it's really nice when you're facing from out from the side of your board and it allows you to turn around in all directions um, which is really important for you know improving your balance while you're on the board all right so from here we're gonna come into sitting and we're gonna do kind of like a seated twist legs but we're gonna go into compass and if you're gonna try compass on your board it's really important that you anchor your sit bones down and really engage through your core and your entire back so that you don't lose control of your leg and it doesn't come you know flying down and smack the board really hard because um that would be really painful um this is an inflatable board um but nonetheless uh it does leave bruises on you when you hit yourself <laughs> on your shins or on your legs um so just be aware that you know you don't want to let your limbs just kind of fly down and smack the board um because it does hurt so i really enjoyed doing compass pose on here though it felt uh pretty amazing and at this point i was feeling like okay i think that i'm gonna be able to do a good flying splits pose um which you'll see in a little bit um now, one thing I wanted to mention is I always see people um, trying to do headstands and handstands when they're out on their paddle boards. And quite often I see people falling and like uh, hard, like on their backs and they look like they've twisted their necks. And I wonder if, you know, they can even do those poses uh, off of 
the stand up paddle board like if can they do those poses on their mats and if not then why are they trying them on the board so i feel like if you're not able to do a pose you know on your mat you should not really be trying to do it on your stand up paddle board so that's one tip that i have on just practicing safely is only attempt what you can already do and have perfected on your mat so this pose right here is one that i've you know done many times and i still wasn't not able to fly it so my back leg as you saw didn't come off of you know the board but i was you know pretty close to getting it and i feel like in much calmer water i would probably be able to do it so i'm kind of excited about that So this is the end of this sequence. And like I said, you know, this is something that, you know, you can just vary everything based on um, your body and your goals and what you're wanting to accomplish with your practice. So here again, I decided to try bow pose to see if it was any easier the second time around. And I have to say that it was not. <laughs> It was still felt incredibly hard for some reason. All right, from here we're going into plank and we're going on to the next sequence. All right, so this is our last sequence. We've just transitioned through plank into sitting and now we're going into reclined um, position and we're going to come into reclined cow face so both legs up in the air cross them over and then just pulling your feet up towards your hips um, this is opening up the entire back side of the body um, and it's also stretching like your glutes and just pretty much just relaxing your entire back from here i'm going to try to do some type of back bend i really wanted to come into a full bridge but I felt like just even getting up on my head would be good and it actually felt so good that I stayed there for a bit just looking around at everything that was going on around me. Um, it was an interesting feeling being upside down like that on the board and I can't wait to actually go into a full back bend um, on the board with maybe even just one leg in the air. We'll see when that happens. Um, and then from here we're just going to come back into forward fold and then we're going to come into an actual seated twist um, but first we're going in through tabletop and then reverse plank and i was really surprised that reverse plank actually felt as open as it did because that's a pretty hard pose for me um, even on a mat so it felt uh, pretty amazing on the board um, from there again forward fold and then we're coming into a seated twist I'm getting ready here to um, come into pigeon and mermaids so I'm finishing opening up through kind of like the hips and the side of the body a little bit more and again here you're going to transition through a kneeling position into down dog um, and then from there we're going to go into single leg down dog and right into pigeon. So once you get used to kind of transitioning through that kind of like uh, cross-legged seated position into plank, into down dog, everything starts to feel more like a flow. So here we are in pigeon and from here we're going to just pop up and do a little bit of mermaid which is really fun. Obviously, you're on the water, so <laughs> it's very fitting of this whole experience. And we're actually almost done with this practice. So um, when you're practicing out on the water, uh, time just flies by and sometimes what feels like a really long practice is actually not that long of a practice and then other times what feels like a short practice is a much longer practice so there's kind of like no sense of time when you're on the water um, and then from here I'm just doing um, butterfly pose and then I'm just gonna lay back in corpse pose and just 
be done. So that's it. That's what a 16 minute practice on a stand up paddleboard looks like. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it has been helpful. I will be back soon with more exercises and workouts to help you get your leanest, fittest body. Thanks so much for watching.